Bonsoir à tous. Good evening, everyone. Um, uh, thank you to be with us for, for, this, for this event uh, organized by the Diplomatic Service of uh, the European Union in collaboration with the, the Italian Cultural Institute and uh, in partnership with the Courrier des Balkans. I am the president of the, of the Courrier des Balkans. Ce soir, à l'Institut culturel italien, nous accueillons le Service européen d'action extérieure avec un programme 100% balkanique. Nous présentons six vidéos des six jeunes artistes des Balkans occidentaux pour montrer la vitalité, la jeunesse, l'innovation dont ces jeunes sont capables. Et ils nous présentent leurs activités, leurs initiatives et nous montrent surtout une société bouillonnante, tout à fait européenne, qui est prête à joindre l'Union européenne. Voilà, bonsoir et euh, euh, de la part de, de, du service d'action extérieure européen, euh, je vous souhaite la bienvenue pour cette euh, discussion aujourd'hui, pour cette présentation. Nous sommes le bras diplomatique de l'Union européenne euh, qui organise des, des événements qui fait exactement le lien entre euh, la région, les Balkans dans ce cas-là, et l'Union européenne. On veut montrer des gens, on veut montrer les talents, on veut montrer des vrais Européens qui existent un peu partout, aussi à l'extérieur de l'Union européenne. On veut créer qu'on on appartient ensemble, notamment, et ça c'est un peu l'idée de, de, de cet événement aujourd'hui. Et une deuxième chose, si on regarde dans les médias, si on regarde un peu dans les journaux, qu'est-ce qu'on lit euh, des, des Balkans Souvent, on lit des problèmes, euh, la criminalité, euh, les problèmes, euh, les frustrations peut-être aussi, les frustrations politiques peut-être. Ou on lit euh, autre chose sur les processus plutôt politiques, administratifs, qui ne sont pas très qui ne sont pas très clairs pour les, pour les gens. Et nous, ce qu'on veut montrer aujourd'hui avec, euh, avec euh, les, euh, six, euh, les six histoires, les six exemples aussi des Européens, qu'il existe aussi un visage humain, qu'il existe aussi euh, des vraies personnes euh, qui sentent l'Europe et qui font la différence. Merci beaucoup. Bonjour, ben, en tant que représentant de la présidence française de l'Union européenne, euh, on est très content de, de cette initiative qu'on s'amuse. Euh, vous savez que la, la France a fait des Balkans occidentaux sa priorité euh, pour sa présidence. On aura bientôt un sommet organisé le 23 juin à Bruxelles. Et la jeunesse fait partie des sujets qu'on veut, qu veut, euh, qu veut aborder. Et je trouve l'originalité de cette initiative ce soir euh, de l'Institut italien à Paris, c'est vraiment de montrer le côté, euh, une image positive des Balkans, de ces jeunes qui créent, qui apportent leur contribution à l'Union Européenne et qui sont in fine déjà membres, membres des Européens euh, qui font la différence. There would be six videos, but unfortunately two of them are, are not with us. Uh, they, they had uh, uh, professional, professional obligation, but uh, uh, they are coming from Skopje, they are coming from Belgrade, from uh, uh, Tirana, from Sarajevo, and they are with us and they will discuss with us tonight. So um, uh, first we will introduce uh, the, the two first video. Uh, uh, there will be the, the, the video of Maria. Maria is not with us, but she's from uh, uh, Cetinje, from Montenegro and the, the, the video of, of Nevena from, from Belgrade. Maria Vukovic. That's the main purpose of everything, to enjoy and to love what you do. I'm Maria Vukovic, high jumper from Montenegro. I was born in Croatia, in Knin, and after a war, 95, we came in Montenegro. At the beginning, it was just playing basketball, football, and then one day, professor said, uh, let's try high jump, and it was like a love at first jump. That feeling over the bar and landing, it was beautiful. 
I was second at European Junior in Novi Sad 2009 and one year after I won World Junior Championship, the first medal for Montenegro. So it took some time to realize what I did. My family was always with me. My sister, she believed in me more than I did in some period of my life. It's really hard to prepare mentally. It's hard to stay focused. It's hard to believe and trust. When I'm about to jump, I really try to find the moment of joy. In uh, Tokyo, I was really proud. I was like, that's it. That's what I'm capable of. It gave me wings. I really feel like a woman of Europe or a woman of the world because I, we all fight with the same insecurities, problems in sport or in general in life, so it's easier to fight together for it. Sports connect us all. Medals are important, but people is what really counts. Mislim da ono čime mladi ljudi iz Srbije i regiona najviše mogu da doprinesu njihova preduzimljivost, kreativnost, brzina, motivisanost. Moje ime je Nevena Ivanović, ja sam modni dizajner, kostimograf, art direktor i preduzetnik iz Beograda. Moja prva revija bila sa 13 godina još u osnovnoj školi. Neo je nastao od 2014. godine. Inspiraciju najčešće uzimam iz svoje kulture pre svega i iz kulture i tradicije nekih drugih dalekih naroda i koristim u svrhu modernog dizajna. Na taj način prenosim tu filozofiju da ne moramo odbaciti tradiciju kako bismo bili moderni. Tim sa kojim trenutno radim posmatram kao svoju drugu porodicu i pokušavamo da zajedno održimo te neke vrednosti gde je najvažnije biti iskren, pošten i poštovati drugi. Pričam i o inkluzivitetu. Bila sam deo tima koji je kreirao prvi odevni komad namenjen ljudima sa invaliditetom i tada smo uspeli da napravimo nešto što niko pre nas nije. Jedan od najvažnijih projekata u kojima sam učestvovala bilo je projekat koji smo radili u Maastrichtu. Cilj projekta bio je da okupi deset evropskih dizajnera iz zemalja članica Evropske unije i oni koje to nisu i da im postavi pitanje evropskog identiteta. Bilo mi je veoma značajno to što sam shvatila da svi imamo neke slične snove, želje, potrebe. Volala bih da mogu da okupim sve sjajne ljude koji se bave kreativnim radom, zato što mislim da mogu da ponude toliko divnih rešenja i toliko lepote svetu oko nas. Wow, so um, please, I, I, I'm going to, to, to ask you, Nevena, to, 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 join me, to join me on stage, please. So, Nevena, congratulations, but you, you, I, I've got just the first question to, to you, I, and we will discuss later, but the first question, we, we saw your work, and it's, it's incredible, but it seems that it, it's something important in your work is linked with identity, the question of identity, of being, so please, please explain me what, what, what is important for, for you in, in this idea of identity. Is that good? Yeah. Good evening, everyone. Um, yeah, actually, you're right. And uh, my whole story is about identity. I discovered that through time. I didn't know it at the beginning, but uh, since I started following my inspiration, I went to different cultures, to different uh, parts of the world. And I realized that maybe if I follow my inner instinct, my uh, inspiration, maybe I'll find out uh, what my DNA is about and where I'm from actually. So right now, 
in my research, I've been through too many countries. So I realized that I'm actually from probably everywhere. <laughs> and that sense of belonging to somewhere is something that drives my work. And um, now um, I really want to communicate that uh, it doesn't matter if I'm from Belgrade or Europe. That's just the place where I've been born. But my whole story actually began too many years ago. Uh, I think maybe 100 of years ago. I'm planning uh, to do the DNA test in the next few years or where I, uh, when I feel that I'm done with the, the, whole, uh, uh, the whole journey. And uh, then I'll compare it to what I did till now. And uh, I believe it would be uh, very exciting to to open that envelope and to see what's inside. That's why you are making this, this mixed with the uh, Chinese, with a, a different part of the world. The, all the culture in your work are... Yeah, absolutely. There is Japan, some African countries, uh, Albania, Slovenia, uh, Montenegro, uh, Bosnia. I, I've been also to Ottoman Empire. I mean, uh, Turks, but back then, you know. Uh, and um, I don't know... I, I think I can see a picture and a, 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 to visualize uh, my DNA flo uh, following through the world. And uh, that's, that's something I'm really, I'm really uh, happy to see. Is it, is it what's uh, the real DNA or, or not? Uh, <laughs> and we will, we will continue the discussion later. Thank, Thank you very much. Yeah. So we are going to, to continue to discover all the, these young people. Uh, uh, the, the, the second uh, video we will uh, discover, uh, we will have also two, two videos, uh, one from uh, uh, Arbor. Uh, Arbor is not with us tonight, but we will present uh, his, his work. And, uh, uh, and then we will, we will have the video of Benjamin. So uh, he's, he's with us and we, we will have also a discussion. So, I let you discover the video. I do believe in freedom. I do believe on the freedom of movement, freedom of coexistence, freedom to create without being uh, harmful towards each other and without having any prejudice. I'm Arbor Selmani. I'm a human rights activist a writer and a journalist from Kosovo. In 2014, I wrote a story about the LGBT community in Kosovo and uh, the newspaper where I was working, they put it on the front page. And you have no idea the impact it had. People all over the place talked about the story because it was not a story about victimizing the LGBT community. It was a story about empowering them. And it helped a lot. Uh, after two or three years, we started the first Pride and the first marches of the LGBT community in Kosovo. I remember that ever since I was a child, I wouldn't just agree with a lot of things happening in this society. From 18 years old and on, I've been working as a journalist. I think I've always been a different journalist because I've always been writing about things that were not on the mainstream media. Different communities in Kosovo really need to have their voice heard. And I think that it's up to us, writers, artists, journalists, to kind of let them be seen and be integrated within this society. I believe on the power of the written word. You can change someone's life. You can really uh, make a stand. You can have a cause. You can fight for something with just a book of poems. I want people to have more compassion after they read my poems. As provocative as they can be, I still think that my poems are empowering and these poems can really be used for something good. I talk a lot about peace, I talk about love and reconciliation. With our art, we want to bring people closer together. My name is Benjamin Cengic. I'm a street artist and a film producer. I was born in 1993 here in Sarajevo. I started painting graffiti at the age of 13, and somehow it marked my life. 
In 2016, around age of 22, I felt some kind of urge to create something larger. I organized uh, an association, Oboyana Klapa. Street art has a big power of communicating with the widest possible audience. Everybody is able to look at it, to think about it, to think about what artists actually wanted to say. When we do workshops, we bring the participants outside. You give them certain tasks, they share the same problems, they share the same goal, and nothing else exists. They are there to create together, and when they work together, it's an amazing thing. Sada Festival is a unique street art festival which uses air purifying paint to create murals around Sarajevo. One square meter of this paint purifies the air as much as one grown-up tree. We are trying to raise awareness of the way we treat nature. Gallery Manifesto is a hybrid space created for exhibiting and selling art, as well as educating young artists. They can get a chance to sell their work. We want to bring artists from all around Europe and all around the world to Sarajevo. But in the same time, we want to present the work of our artists. So we create this platform, which can be a, a channel of exchange between Bosnia and Herzegovina and the rest of the world. Oh, so please, Benjamin, join, join me on stage and uh, Bravo, bravo. <laughs> bravo for the people who made the video. The video is really amazing. All of the videos are amazing. So congratulations to the task force and to the authors. So in, in your, in your uh, artist, it's, 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 uh, you say that the art could uh, bring people all together and uh, you are from Sarajevo. Is it important for you? Is it, does it mean something being from Sarajevo and being an artist? I, I, I was in Sarajevo. I, thought, I think that everybody could be an artist in Sarajevo. I mean, but is it important for you being from Sarajevo? And uh, you, you, you talked about uh, Bosnia Herzegovina and the way it could uh, 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 be a, a place to bring people together. So please. Well, I believe, first of all, art is an international language. Everybody can and should understand art. So I believe that just by this, it's able to bring people together. And <clears throat> what I was meaning when saying that we also use art as a, a tool of really bringing people together. We take people from different uh, ethnicities and different nationalities in Bosnia and Herzegovina, which are still kind of... Uh, arguing and not really liking each other. So we take all of them together, we bring them to one place, we give them paint, we give them brushes, we give them tools, and you know we give them an opportunity to create together. And you can see these people, no matter the age, no matter the gender, no matter anything, uh, they just met each other. And then they start creating one artwork together. At the end of the day, all of them, they're best friends. And this is really the way of them sharing their thoughts, their ideas, and the way to approach this, this piece, this artwork, it really brings them together. It really you know, makes it all like a one compound, one unique big thing. And uh, to be from Sarajevo and to be creating, um, I believe Sarajevo, well, in the 80s, it really was kind of a cultural center of Yugoslavia, as they say, I don't remember it. Uh, and then this tragic thing happens, but Sarajevo continues creating and people from Sarajevo continue creating art and they continue kind of fighting with the problems around them uh, by just creating and making and making art. And uh, for me, Sarajevo is really exceptional and it's kind of inspirational because not many people do create art, not many people are artists, but everything there is kind of an art for me. You know? And it's just many things really come close to you because it's a small city and then you can have an inspiration everywhere. You can use, you know, 
just important to listen, to observe, and to feel things. And Sarajevo really offers this on the palm of a hand. Thank you, Farah. Thank Farah you very Puno. much. So we are still impressed, but we are continuing our journey and we are continuing to discover this. Sorry, my paper. So uh, uh, the next video we will uh, uh, now uh, look at is uh, the, the, the video of uh, Artes. So Artes is with us, but let's see first the video. Through my films, I hope to remind people that everybody has power. You have the power to change your life and the world around you for better. My name is Artis Faruni, and I'm an online content creator and film director from Albania. When I was 25 years old, I won an international Emmy Award, which was an absolutely surreal experience because I was filming this with uh, my brother helping me with a gimbal, edited in my room. And I think it's a very important message for everyone that you can tell a good story anywhere and everywhere. Hello, guys. I am teaching now aspiring content creators all over Europe and the world, basically trying to make their process easier and also hopefully making them fall in love with storytelling, just like I did. Ever since I started filmmaking, I realized that I was trying to give value and inspire people. And to do that, I have to look inward and see what inspires me, obviously, the protection of the environment, peace, you know, and unity around the world. I'm proud to be Albanian, but I also always felt as a global citizen. I've lived in many countries, in Slovenia, in Germany, and what I found is that through storytelling, I could break borders and I could access anyone. This is gorgeous. Albania hasn't had the kindest history, but it has made us much more resilient and creative, which is why I think we can contribute so much more to Europe and make a lot more dreams come true for young people throughout Albania. Please, raise your test. So, bravo also, and uh, um, you say, you say, uh, storytelling can break borders. That's what, that is your, your word. Storytelling can break borders, and you, you speak about uh, protecting the environment. Uh, you, you, uh, do you think that, uh, uh, Storytelling can have an, an impact on people. Uh, please. Yeah. Bonjour. Hello, everyone. Um, yeah, I believe storytelling is definitely one of the most powerful tools to impact the world. The world is shaped by the stories we tell to each other, to uh, our family members, to the world. And I definitely feel like everyone is a storyteller. And if we all use that more, actively, uh, be that with each other, be that through a little post, be that with our creative or professions, fields, doesn't matter. If we take a more active role and share our stories, we will see that we are more similar than we are different. And you can see that in our goals, in our fears, in everything. And of course, you can also, by talking about things that impact you locally or globally, uh, you can impact even very important topics like the environment and especially I would say the youth is very crucial that we take a more active stand on this because uh, we can make an impact and it is done if we all share these stories in a way or another and it is a very important um, time in our 
uh, world to to change things and the young people will be the generation that will really make the difference so i i hope that everyone realizes that we can do that through storytelling no matter your profession i hope so too and uh, i think everybody uh, hope too but uh, congratulations really congratulations it's 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 very rich what you are doing thank, thank you, you so very much. much we will continue the discussion later <laughs> And we have uh, a last video uh, to discover. So uh, we will now uh, uh, look at the, the video of Dina. I want to tell stories like sisterhood that are sincere <laughs> because true stories always find their way. <laughs> I'm Dina Duma and I'm a writer director from North Macedonia. I was born in uh, Skopje in 1991 and I'm now in uh, Paris writing my next uh, feature film. I was invited here by Com Film Festival uh, together with five other young uh, filmmakers from all over the world so we can make our stories better. My latest film, Sisterhood, will be the first Macedonian and first Balkan film shown in Netflix. This film was inspired by uh, true events that happened in my school when I was 15. A boy and a girl had intercourse, uh, someone posted it online and uh, it became viral. The boy was made a hero and uh, the girl she was slut shamed and at the end she moved to another country. I think it's a really global problem happening in uh, schools around the world. I know that this film will not change the world, but I really hope it will open a discussion about the impact that the social media has on the young generation, on uh, how to use uh, social media in a positive way. Please, Dina, can you join me on the stage? So you were, you were at the Cannes Festival film? Yes, I was. So please, please, just, just explain me. How was the experience? Wow, it was really, really amazing. Um, I mean, to be there and to have this um, opportunity to see this amazing films from all around the world, um, to meet many, many people from over around the world. It was really, for me, it was really an important and I might say a life-changing experience. So it was amazing. Great, great. So you, you, you already a star. Yeah. Uh, uh, so. Please, you, you, you are making film, but you, you, your thematic are very serious and very actually, I mean, cyberbullying, it's uh, uh, something very actual. And uh, uh, do you think, well, making film uh, uh, could, can change the, the, the mentality about this, this issue, about this question? Do you have feedback uh, from a movie or, uh, please? Uh, Yes, so when I started making the film, I somehow thought that this was um, something very local, um, this social media bullying um, thing with the young generation. Uh, but then when the film was uh, picked up uh, from Netflix and when it started traveling on film festivals, um, I connected with the audience and I realized that this is really a global problem because uh, most of the audience, um, were parents to teenagers or um, teenagers themselves who came to, the, to see the film and who could really relate to these problems. So yes, of course, um, this is really important for me, uh, this feedback as a, as a filmmaker that, um, you know, not only that it's something that is happening in my country, but it's also really a big issue. In, in what was the, the reaction of people looking at you at your movie, at your film? Yes, uh, I mean, so they could recognize um, some of their, their 
children because they have dealt with, with this kind of problem. Um, they know about this problem. So they were really, in the end, they were really shocked in a way. And um, it, in a way it opened a, a discussion and also in my country, it opened a big discussion, which is really, I'm really happy about this because before no one, um, no one speaks about this problem and the problems of the young generation. Well, now I see that some changes are starting to, to happen. Okay, thank you. So stay thank here you. and maybe we can have maybe a, a, a discussion with all of you now. Uh, uh, So, uh, really, I'm, I'm impressed by your maturity and by your, uh, uh, your idea that actually you, you, you are very, you are, each of you, 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 you are uh, uh, bringing some values, some very values of peace, for example, and you, you know that, uh, well, we all know, unfortunately, that uh, these days uh, war came back in Europe, but uh, uh, you are bringing some, some uh, peace, uh, in you, in all your your work. So, uh, can you can you uh, explain us what does it mean to you uh, uh, to this this, uh, this experience of uh, of peace in your work and uh, uh, how you can uh, uh, have uh, 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 well how how the, the people can uh, uh, react to your work and this uh, this ideas. Are we Please. gonna stay and start yeah, with the ladies we or? Can, we can have, it's, it's, it's a question to all of you. So you, you will react to this idea of peace and. Or I can go myself. Well, uh, I was born in, not in peace, you know. And when I was born, I believe it was very hard for my parents and for everybody in Bosnia and Herzegovina. Uh, I remember just post-war era and I remember it's, it's not something you want to live in, you know, it, it's hard times and uh, maybe because of those moments and maybe because of something that entered my uh, character and my, my personality early in the beginning, uh, I believe that this is the most important thing to fight for and uh, when saying peace, I don't only mean, uh, uh, say, uh, not having a war, but also inner peace, peace with the world around you, peace with nature, peace with God or whatever you believe in. Peace is something that helps us, uh, like I, I cannot create without the peace. I cannot do anything without the peace. And I believe that this is the most important thing. When you are in peace with yourself, you can be in peace with everybody. And I can go on talking like this until the morning. I believe we don't have that much time. <laughs> Uh, so, peace is the most important thing, and maybe my fellow. Yeah, I definitely agree. <laughs> um, I would say, just to add a layer on that, I definitely agree. It starts within. I actually <laughs> made a film that, uh, with the title, it starts within, which was about peace. But um, uh, I think on another level, it's important again to take a bit more of an active stand on some issues like what's going on for example with Ukraine it cannot be unnoticed and I feel what is very overwhelming for most of us is that the idea that I cannot do anything about this so why even bother and talk about it uh, it feels like we can not be making a difference and I again <laughs> ironically with the, the title of our group I think we definitely can make a difference no matter who you are no matter where you are it's so easy nowadays. The world has never been as accessible as now. And you can just take a phone, share a story, talk about it. Uh, uh, your perspective matters. And so many people gather together by doing a little act like this, especially through tools like we have today with social media, which are like catalyzer of our human nature. It's important to, to, uh, to push the right values and, and to, to stand up for peace and um, even with simple things like this, I believe we can make a difference. Yeah. 
Yes, so we all come from this region and we are really familiar with, with this situation that now Ukraine is going through. So I just hope, I mean, it will end soon. I know it, it must end soon. And then, I mean, they'll be strong again. So this is all I have to say. I think we all said those most important things. And uh, I would like to underline uh, what Benjamin said, the peace starts within us. And uh, I started a whole, um, I would say, movement of people uh, that is actually about peace. Uh, I call those people now warriors, people who believe and fight for good. They fight against things that they feel bad about. Now, I believe that every normal person feels bad about war anywhere in the world. Now it's happening in Europe. It's super close, but we don't see it because it's just across the border and just across another border. And in our, in our everyday lives, we feel it just by uh, increasing the prices uh, in our pro I mean, in uh, countries that are not that well situated. Uh, and uh, we feel it somehow, but still we don't see bombs. And as we all know how it looks when it's when bombs are falling and when everything happens, I need I need people now to just feel that they have to stand uh, against it and to say to go out in a protest to uh, to just say stop stop this you know and first that's the thing that people from uh, from those regions that are in danger now uh, they have to stand up and say we don't want to be on this side. Not, it doesn't matter if people are from Russia or from uh, Ukraine or from everywhere. Uh, they they feel the war is bad. So um, you you just take make a stand. Actually, that that's that's my that's my motivation. Just make a stand and say I don't want to do this. Uh, and I believe that the, uh, none. none one on the, or another side is enjoying this war. It doesn't matter if the aggressor or the oppressor is talking about. So yeah, that, that's the thing. Uh, everyone is suffering and kids all over the world are suffering because of this. So that's why I believe in peace. Actually. Thank you. Thank you, Nevena. Yeah. No, I'm, I'm very impressed with your determination and with your ideas. I mean, you when we see your video, when we, we, we see your, your videos, we, 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 we think that everything's possible because you, you make things possible uh, for you and for everybody. Uh, uh, Europe made a difference. Uh, one idea of uh, the, the European uh, uh, ideal is uh, the, the trans border, breaking borders. And uh, uh, you are breaking borders in, in, a, in many sense. You are traveling. You 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 bring bring people together, but you are also a breaking border of 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 the south of the, of the of the ideas. You are making move in in your in your society and and for so well. I I would like to 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 hear you about this idea to break borders and and something about the idea of European the Euro, European ideal of trans border cooperation and. The, Please, I don't know if it's uh, if it talks to you uh, the idea of uh, breaking borders. Well, uh, uh, first, I would like to say that we are the ones making borders for ourselves in the first case. You know, so, if we decide not to have any borders, we will have to have a passport with, with us, you know, when traveling. But we show it and we continue. But uh, what's bigger problem is the borders that we really put upon our ourselves and as i am growing i am uh, realizing that all of these cliche sayings that people were saying to me as a, as a kid actually make a sense and when you said you can do everything you want and that we seem like we can do everything it really is like this and uh, every person on the world in the world can say this is not my border. Everybody can say I don't have it, and everybody can just keep on working and creating and building and whatever as much as they know. Just about uh, the right um, uh, state of mind 
and about pushing and pushing and pushing. And the more you push, the border goes further. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> I believe that ideas uh, doesn't know borders. So that's why we are communicating well. It, we are all here from somewhere else, you know, and we all understand what we saw on the TV, on the video. <laughs> and uh, I, I really was thinking well, while I was watching the videos, we all said similar things. Like we are all struggling and uh, fighting for same things. We have similar problems. We have similar ideas. And th th that's what I see here. And that's why we are not a bit different from any other person in Europe or in the world. And when we take off all of the costume we wear, and all of the masks, when the masks fall down, then we see people who actually want the same things. And uh, that's why being idealist in a capitalistic world, is very hard. And uh, we all are that in the, in the depth of our souls. So that's why ideas are crossing every border that a, a human can make. Do you think Europe is important? Yeah. Uh, I mean, uh, what, what, what does it mean being uh, European in your work and in your it can mean nothing and it can mean everything. It, it depends on how you look at it. If, it's a, if it makes borders for you, then it means. But if it makes a space for you to expand, to meet uh, other people, to work with them, then, then it's very good. And I mean, everything in life is like that. It just depends on how you see it. And I don't see borders around myself. That's, Thank you. that's a beginning. <laughs> Dina, yes? Yes, same question. The <laughs> same question. I mean, okay. breaking borders, but uh, you are talking about cyber bullying yes. on, your, on your, and actually the border is here in the mind. Uh, uh, when you talk about uh, this guy that became an hero and uh, the, the girl that uh, uh, he's, uh, uh, well, it's a, it's a kind of tragedy, but it's also a kind of border. Exactly, yes. Uh, so I come from the film world where everyone understands the moving pictures, everyone can relate to, to, to the to film. So for me, it's a bit easier to express myself and to get rid, rid of these borders because, because it doesn't matter which language my protagonist speak in. When people come to the cinema, they, they can understand. They can understand and they can relate to these problems. So the borders really don't exist. Thank you. I mean, there's not much I can add here, but I guess, again, they are, it's important we, we understand what borders means to us individually and as a collective. And I think to take a page out of the EU, what, what I like about it is the word union, in it, right? So I think we have to, to really uh, make that a part of our lives and focus on that instead of the borders. Because like uh, uh, my peers were saying, like it, it can be either of them. And it's on us to decide where are we going to focus. For us that we are standing here, uh, there are no borders in our mind, which is why we've continued and, and, and shared that through our stories, through our work. But everybody can do that. And um, yeah, I think it's just an important distinction to make. And a choice each individually, which then will reflect collectively of which is it going to be? Is it going to be the borders or is it going to be the union aspect? And well, we all know the world needs more union than ever. So hopefully the choice will be the latter. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Maybe, maybe we can open the, the floor to, to the audience because I think you saw this amazing video and uh, all this work. We, you have a lot of questions, I can imagine. So please, please uh, ask a question. Uh, maybe there would be a microphone on. And is it on? It is? OK. Uh, thank you, Dusan Gajic, a journalist. Um, so to con closer to the mic, is it OK? OK. So to continue this discussion about the borders, um, obviously in the activities uh, and um, uh, 
uh, through your creativity and talent, you are very good in uh, crossing the borders. That doesn't seem to be a, a problem. But how disappointed you are uh, or not that um, your countries, places that you come from, uh, were not so good in overcoming borders, that they are not still part of the borderless uh, EU, and um, how hopeful you are that that would happen. Is that something important to you? Thank you. Can I have a <laughs> well, I come from a country which has border on the outside and has border on the inside. It actually doesn't have the borders, but in the people's mind, we have three entities, three different people, three presidents, and it's all border, 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 border. Uh, am I disappointed that things happened the way they happened in the past? Mm, I cannot say I'm disappointed. I'm sad in one hand. On the other hand, in my life, the things are the way they are now, and I'm pretty satisfied with my life. And if those things happen, I don't know, then maybe I would be disappointed, you understand? But um, what my point actually was in the beginning is that some things are not going to change, especially in our region. And uh, for the people running our, our region and for people putting these borders, only thing they care about is their own and personal uh, benefit. And by knowing this, I can not be... Uh, Again, what's the word that you said? Disappointed? I cannot be disappointed. I can only sit in my home and think of the ways to kind of make them go away and to fight against them. And if uh, turning back to the past mm, is taking too much time from the present times and from the future, and if being disappointed about the past, uh, I cannot have enough time and enough uh, energy to do things now in order to show them that the way they do is wrong. I think something like this maybe is a good answer. Okay. Um, yeah, I would say it, to me it's important personally to remember that this is not necessarily the progression and our countries, how everything has evolved. It's not necessarily uh, the fault of the people. <laughs> it's a, a few people that lead um, a country. Uh, and of course, the people have uh, a power to, to make more change. But I don't think anybody should feel disappointment. Uh, it definitely affects our daily lives. Uh, like it cannot be unnoticed, whether we are part, let's say, of the EU or not. So. Um, I, I do think that we are moving very fast in the direction, and I can speak with more conviction with my country, but I'm sure uh, in the other countries as well. Uh, it's very, it's a metric, a healthy metric, I think it's to, to, uh, to remind ourselves that the progression we've made, despite these limitations that we've had, is incredible. I, I don't know many countries that have progressed in such a speed, and so um, I think that's only going further and further. And uh, if, uh, you know, we take notice of that uh, and we continue doing that, especially individually, because there's not much we can do on, um, uh, on that other level, I think we will uh, very soon be in a different uh, kind of discussion, <laughs> hopefully. I, I wouldn't say I'm, I'm disappointed. Um, but I would say that I'm really sad because all of my friends and uh, close people moved away from, from my country, from Macedonia, uh, to have opportunities, job opportunities in, in Europe. And when I think about this, it's, it's, really, it's really making me sad that this, this happened to my country. But on the other hand, I know that we are really progressing fast. And I have hope that soon something will change and new generations are coming. So I, I somehow have hope. I actually have a question for you. 
Yeah. <laughs> uh, if you see us as presenters of our countries, do you think we belong to European Union or not? Are we good enough? Or are we better? <laughs> Definitely better. <laughs> but thank you. <laughs> I mean, this is what's unseen when, when it comes to uh, uh, connecting countries in Union. Uh, we see countries, we see governments, we see the bad part, if you ask me. Nobody here likes our governments, I believe. <laughs> you cannot, yeah. And uh, you don't like it either, <laughs> I guess. But people who live in those countries are what's important. And if we talk again about Russia and Ukraine, the only important thing are people. And that's who we are. We represent us, ourselves, what we do, what we fight for. And there are so much more people in our countries like us. And I hate that Union actually somehow makes a border, like those out of it and those in. And that's something I would like to change. And I mean, it's idealistic, but that's what I live for. No, it's it's great. It's great, really. You you uh, uh, actually um, you you as as I said, um, you are you are uh, well crossing the borders, and uh, uh, the, uh, the the fact is that well we see we see all, all this. So maybe I don't know another question. <laughs> that was a second question. Okay. Hello, I'm Ivan Mianovic. I'm also a journalist. I come from Montenegro, and I have a few broader questions for you. First one is about uh, as young representatives who make a difference in your countries, how do you see the potential of young generations in the Western Balkans? How are they engaged to make a difference in their, in their countries, in their region in order to push things forward? And the uh, second question, um, how young generation of Western Balkans see Europe, Europe uh, when we speak as you, in, uh, about Europe in terms of European Union? like a distant dream or like a reality? And um, how is Europe making difference for them? Thank you. <laughs> uh, first question was regarding the new generations. And well, um, in Bosnia and Herzegovina, we were always kind of uh, slow and melancholic, lethargic, lethargic, it's the right way. And I see kind of that the younger people younger for me, they're waking up and they are more active. Our biggest problem was inactivity of the people. The people didn't take any active role in their life, especially in community or whatever. And uh, people now are doing it with, with much more passion and people like young people, they're actually critically thinking about the world around them and saying, ah, okay, this is the problem. Let's see how to fix that problem. Uh, the generations above us didn't have it, maybe because of the system that was before, you know, they couldn't. Uh, and I believe that the future is bright and that the new generations are going to be more powerful and stronger. Maybe you will have 10 of young Europeans making a difference in a few years from the same countries, but double. Like. Uh, and the other question was uh, regarding... Um, how do they see Europe? Well, they often see it from the plane or from the bus when they are leaving the, our countries, you know. Uh, and uh, they see it as, as some kind of oasis of a lot of money and not too much work, but a perfect life. And uh, I'm aware, well aware, because I also have a lot of friends who went from Sarajevo to Germany, to France, to Nor Norway, wherever. Uh, it's not that bright. You know, everybody says it was much better in Bosnia. And really, because when they go to Europe, they learn that in order to achieve something, you must work. And when you work hard, you don't have free time, you know, and you, you cannot do whatever you want. You work hard, you earn money, and then you just go to sleep. And everybody says, ah, oh, it's much better there. But this is what we need to have, and this is what we need to learn, uh, work ethics, uh, and, you know, just pushing it all the way. I think that's it. I, 
I mean, to our defense, <laughs> I, like I was talking in, in my video profile about like how this has made us resilient, like the, the limitations and all of this. But to be fair, after a long time, it gets exhausting and incentives are important. So yes, sometimes it feels distant um, and people get tired that is noticeable, which I think is why it's important to give some incentives either by the EU or by to, to give some, because it, it looks sometimes very far for us. It feels very close. Um, I can speak for my country. I think the young people, uh, feel European, it's not Europe, like we are European. First of all, let's just put that out there to, to the, the obvious. Um, but it's definitely something they, like we all aspire to because of the great values, because values that we share, right? We share all these values. We are so similar and us standing here in terms of like the question about the youth, we are just representatives in this case. There's millions of us, I would say. People that are so eager, especially the young people, again, considering the limitation, considering uh, our history, we're still like going even further. I would say, yes, that, that aspect does exist, but I also see the side of people being so eager to, to, um, to prove the obvious that, yes, we are worth it. Yes, we are the same. Yes, we can be there. And I feel because of that eagerness, we are um, able to give sometimes even more um, and, and, and there's so much to give. Europe is so diverse and each of us are, you know, have so many cultural richness and uh, it's worth celebrating. And I think uh, the young people want to celebrate that and want to showcase that and are eager even to put in the work, if given a little more incentive. Uh, we do life like, for example, living a good life and enjoying life, which is, I think, something good and something that all Europe should uh, you know uh, aspire to life is life is for the living for 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 enjoying it so yes the youth i think has a lot of uh, promise and uh it can add a lot of value and maybe i lost a bit the train i combined the questions also <laughs> thank you Dina, please since as i said in my country a lot of young people already moved out um trying to find better opportunities um, in Europe. And yes, they see Europe as an oasis. And then when, when they come and face the reality, it's completely different. And many of them are, are somehow sad and not really happy because also they, they are not home. So they, they, were, they didn't want to leave their home, but they somehow had to do this. And they, they're not happy because of this, of course. Um, and speaking for my country, um, I think we're a bit, I mean, we kind of feel far away now from, from Europe um, since now we, we changed the name and still there are some problems with our neighbors. And I think the youth really is, is frustrated with this and we don't feel like this is, this is a problem, actually, that really this could be something that's, that could be uh, resolved. Uh, well, I think that Europe, the, the greatest value that European Union gives to everyone uh, of us and to our countries is inspiration. Inspiration to be better, to work on what's bad, and to open all of those, I don't know the name for that thing, but I remember them doing those things, th those chapters and things. And like, whenever you open a new chapter, there are like a bunch of things you need to do. So your, your opinion says, do that, do that, do that. And you work, it's like a teacher, like to be good, you should do this. And we all need teachers sometimes in life, but there are times where you can teach the teacher uh, every student has a good thing to offer. And that's what European Union, I think, understands. That's why European Union wants us all together. It's for everyone to bring what's good. It doesn't matter if it's financial or, or if it's like uh, cultural, whichever. However, yeah, but that, that's what 
Europe is. Inspiration to all of us to be better and to work on what's not working. Thank you, thank you very much. Well, listening, listening to you, I think it reminds us uh, in EU uh, that uh, uh, EU is not Europe and Europe is much more larger than, than EU. So thank you very much to, to remind us <laughs> this fact. Uh, there is a question, maybe. I didn't really plan to speak, but I, I felt so inspired by your intervention. My name is Jasmin Jelicic. And I will, before I ask my question, just use the opportunity to say that I lead a wonderful team called West Balkans Task Force within the European External Action Service. People who produce this campaign and who organize this event together with our friends at the Italian Institute. So there is Sonia Alceo, uh, Osa Harris, um, and I would like to, uh, to thank them for, for working on this campaign. Um, this is something that we care about a lot. Um, this campaign has been seen by more than 15 million people so far. This is the fourth edition, and uh, with the profiles like this, we hope that it will reach many, many more million people all over the world. We are web streaming this live all over the world via European External Action Service channels. This is also broadcasted via European Union delegations in the Western Balkans. So we hope to move the bar and many, many more million viewers for this campaign. I want to thank also Diego, our dear friend from the European External Action Service for who used to work with us and who hosting us tonight, Francesco and a wonderful team of the Institute. We had a wonderful day today. Um, also friends from Brussels who came to support us and who know what we are, what we are trying to do. And um, so many of you in so many ways uh, basically summed up what the EU integration process of the Western Balkans is, which is building the European Union in the Western Balkans. And what we do is really like a find people who do that every day, building the European Union in the Western Balkans, at the same time inspiring people all over Europe and all over the world doing what you do. And I wanna thank you for what you, what you do. And I wanna thank you for collaborating with us for this campaign. You gave us your time, your precious time, and time is the most precious resource. So I wanna thank you from the bottom of my heart. I really, and also for all of us who joined us tonight, thank you so much. This means a lot, a lot to us, this campaign and everything that we, when we try to communicate the European Union in the Western Balkans and communicate about the Western Balkans in the European Union. So thank you all for, for support. I have a question. As a, former, as a former journalist, I cannot go without a question. I am triggered to ask each of you a question. I'm passionate about the European Union. I'm passionate about European integration, foreign relations, communications. And I'm also passionate about fashion. And as many people kind of uh, uh, sometimes talk about. And the thing when I saw, and I will single out just one because you deal with fashion. It touched me profoundly when I saw that somebody thought about people with prosthetic legs and designed fashion for them. Um, please tell us. How did, I think I have never seen it before. And this is what I look when I travel everywhere in the world. Um, tell us how did that come about? Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Asna. Um, well, that's a very important story. We started two years ago, I think. Um, it started as a startup and uh, friends of mine, uh, Pirate Art Company, they uh, came up to idea when uh, one of them had a, a car crash and lost his leg. And uh, he was like, I don't wanna live like this. I want my life, I want to improve my life. So yeah, he, uh, he, he was the idea, well, he, he brought the idea there, but his best friend who is a mechan mechanic, or how, how would I say it, yeah? Uh, he, uh, he started developing the solution. And then they gathered us, designers, and told us, we wanna be cool, we wanna be fashionable, we wanna be 
included. We want to be like others. And uh, how can you help us? So we started thinking about it. And we came up to the idea of that completely new uh, piece of clothing. Nobody made it before. Mm, we haven't seen it anywhere in the world. And uh, we created it from scratch. So when we made that... Um, product uh, we tried to put it everywhere around and i'm glad it came here through me i'm just a part of that team and i won't take all of the credits but uh, uh I'm, I'm glad uh, this story is uh, heard here now so um i i felt that that was the most important project i did in my career and i did a lot of interesting and important things i, I guess but this one was different because it actually had uh, it had meaning that moves every one of us and um, i took as an inspiration um first african samurai i don't know if you heard about him yasuke uh he lived in the 16th century and he was from africa somehow with some uh, probably through some ship or somehow he came to to japan and he would he was accepted immediately, even if they never seen a black man before. And uh, that's what we are doing right now. We are accepting everyone, doesn't matter how different they are and how they struggle with being different. That's what inclusion is actually, including everyone. It doesn't matter who they are, who they come, where they come from, what they do, how they walk, how they talk, wh whatever. We are all together in this, and we should always be together. Those are borders we need to tear down. So. Are there any other questions here in the audience? Does it work? Yes. Uh, this is not a question. This is just a very short testimony. I've never doubted that anybody beyond the Iron Curtain or beyond Schengen or beyond anything was anything but European. Never doubted anything. I think there are many of us who believe that. We know there are borders. We know it's extremely difficult for you to have a, to get visas, queues, etc., etc. And we know it's. Uh, most of these countries who do not belong to the European Union, you know, the, the countries you, you are in, um, have a vibrant energy from most young people. I happen to have lived in Pristina quite a lot. I translate from Albanian. And I know about the vibrant nightlife they have there, among other things. And I'm sure it's not the only place where there are things like that. And I can understand at the same time being from another generation and have known about ex Yugoslavia and Yugoslavia, etc., etc., and all the things that happened in between then and now, which we have only spoken about. Um, and I know it's, it's very, it's very, you, you're extremely young, full of energy, and I can imagine that you're, it's hard for you to be, to be uh, limited by all these borders and this impossibility. And I just do hope, and I try in my votes at least, and perhaps in some things I do in, uh, in literature and translation, I do hope that our, our governors, governments will, um, will hear basic common sense things and open up the, uh, open up the rest of Europe, to, will open up to the rest of Europe wherever the border of Europe is afterwards. Thank you. Thank you. Do, do you want to, to react? Yeah, if you want. It sounds really nice, and thank you for the words you said. And thank you really much. Thank you. OK, is there any other question? So, no, or not? So, okay, so, well, I think, thank you very much for, for your work, thank you for your energy.
thank you to 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 thank thank you to 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 bring all this good move and this good uh, uh, energy here